What is going on, you guys? It is Baxter, and we are back. One Piece Film Red Review. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Here for the review. Nothing really much, uh, nothing really else to say. Um, I even got, did a couple little notes. Because uh, there's a few things that happened in this movie. Including, uh... <sighs> Spoilers. We'll, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. So... I enjoyed that movie thoroughly. The music was good. Um, I mean, the the story of the movie was very simple, but it was it was good also. Um, I mean, the whole concept of it was pretty sweet. Um, yeah, it was good. The animation quality was good. You know, it, it was a excellent movie excellent movie and i i wasn't even going to go to it like um i really wanted to see it um and i wasn't even going to go like yesterday on the sunday to go see it i didn't even know it was in theaters i wasn't keeping track um at all about uh theater releases in north america or like i live in canada so like even in canada i didn't know at all until um we were talking about it. Me and my buddy were talking about it. And uh, I was like, oh, well, let me just go on my phone and we'll see when it comes out. It was on the, it was, it was Sunday. So yesterday when we went to watch it and it came out on the Friday and me and him look at each other like, what the fuck? So he's like, do you want to go see film red tonight? And I'm like, do you? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> we got tickets like right then. Um, yeah, 650 show went. There was a dub version and a sub version. Obviously went to go see the sub. Um, it was, man, it was really, really good. So, yeah, I mean, um, I don't know if this is going to be in the right order. Like, I don't even, I, I just started writing shit down. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to start from the top, I guess. Um, Uta's devil fruit power is... It's not quite broken. It's really, really good. But if she's not... One more warning. For those of you that haven't seen this movie yet, if you don't care about getting spoiled, then stay here. If you haven't seen this movie yet, go click on a different video. I just reacted to Bleach. Go watch that because I you're gonna you're going to be spoiled. This is very obvious. You're going to be spoiled. Okay, so yeah, Uta's um, Devil Fruit ability is really sweet, but it's not quite broken. She uses those um, wake mushrooms to keep her awake the entire time so that her, uh, so the people um, stay under uh, Genjutsu. Um, I relate it to uh, basically like the Infinity Sukiyomi from Naruto. Their bodies are still like obviously in the real world, but they're thinking something else. Like they're in a different dimension. It's basically exactly the same as that. Um, I mean, it's... It's it it it's it's really cool. Um, fuck, it's a word. I'm uh, what's the word? Unique. It's a very unique um, devil fruit because I mean, obviously, it fits her character well because it seems like you need to sing in order to even use it in the first place. So obviously, it fit her perfect. Um, yeah, the the whole thing of putting you in a putting you in a genjutsu and then still being able to use their bodies in the real world and command them like they are almost like a zombie army they still get up and they can do even though they're knocked out they're still like you know they can still move by uta's commands attack um and just if it wasn't for the wake mushrooms like you know, it would it would work for a certain period of time, and then yeah, as soon as she falls asleep, 
everything just goes to shit. So it only makes sense that she would have um, a backup plan in order to use that to her full capacity. Um, that was really cool. And then some of the other abilities that she had, like, um, I don't even know what you call them. The, the, there's like the music notes, those lines that the notes go on. I don't even know what they're called, but that's pretty cool. Oh, she can, um, what's the word? I guess like manifest them, um, in real life. And then there was a scene where all the straw hats and a bunch of other people get stuck to the notes, right? And I like, and they can't move, they can't get out. And I mean, that was pretty cool as well. Or like her, hey man, the devil fruit ability is pretty decent. I wasn't upset with it at all. Um, during the previews, you know, obviously, you know, she has a devil fruit, but you didn't know how she was going to use it. They did a, they did a pretty decent job of, uh, of doing that. And then it was, um, fuck. The, uh, those secret, the secret tune that she had to sing in order to bring that demon, um, fuck, what the hell is that called? It starts with a T. Like, I should know this. I just watched the movie. Um, fuck. The fuck's it called? I gotta search this up. But, uh... I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, so then <clears throat> it's pretty cool though how she finds those um and um oh yeah, that's another point I need to write down as well. Um Gordon um, hid away those, uh, the secret, uh, pages of that song, because when she sings it, obviously that demon comes and then he can bring the, uh, the two dimensions together, the real world and the music world, I guess you could say. Um, that was a pretty cool aspect as well. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> The next thing on that I have on here. Oh man. The outfits that they have, that the Straw Hats have in this movie are amazing. They are so awesome. You guys comment down below which Straw Hat you think had the best outfit in this movie. Because I got to give it to Brooke. Easily Brooke. Hands down. Like it... Man, he had like a yellow fro and he had a hoodie on. And it yo, Brooke looked sick, man. Real sick. Um Yeah. <laughs> All their outfits were pretty cool. Um I'm trying to think of the other people. I know Frankie had a I just kind of forget because I was so um uh, concentrated on Brooke and how sick his outfit was. It was just so sweet. Uh, and then uh, the first, the one thing that comes to mind, obviously Brooke and his panty calls, right? He's got to look at those panties. And when uh, when all the straw hats are stuck to the notes and Nami's like, she's like in a position where, well, I guess you could see her panties. She was in a perfect position for it, but Brooke was kind of like on his side. He couldn't quite like tilt his head up, right? <laughs> and uh, fuck, he says something. He says a line and then he says, uh, Nami, I can almost see your panties. Oh man, like that was, so, it was so unexpected. And yo, Brooke is the man. He He's my favorite straw hat. For those of you that have seen um, a couple of my episodes or videos before, Brooke is my favorite straw hat. He's fucking hilarious. His moves are awesome. And he's a pervert, which is fucking hilarious. <laughs> oh, man. 
so yeah, all their all their all their outfits were really good in the in the film right as well. Um, yeah, actually, I had Brooke written down as its own thing. <laughs> um, I'm gonna skip that one and save it for later. <sighs> yeah, I mean, obviously, the soundtrack was really good. Um, actually, you know what's funny is uh, a lot of people um, in my Discord. And some people in the uh, comment section of my One Piece 1039 as well said that they, that they thought the movie was, like, okay. But they liked the soundtrack even better. Which, like, threw me off. Because the soundtrack is good, but I just... It's something you wouldn't expect anybody to say. That the soundtrack, they liked the soundtrack more than the movie. Not to say the movie was bad, right? Like, if the movie was a 10 out of 10, they're, they're saying... That the the music was like an eleven out of ten, you know. It doesn't mean the movie's bad. It's just, which I don't know. Like it's it, it's cool. I just never thought I'd hear all oh, the. I like the music better than the movie. The the music was amazing, right? Um. <laughs> the guest appearances. Oh my god, I can't even. This is. I should have wrote that down. Bueno with his door door fruit. That guy. When I first saw him, I was like, really? Really? Oven? Um, Brulee was there. Uh, Big Mom got a little bit of screen time for like five seconds. Katakuri was there. And he's like, oh, I'm just here to save my sister. <laughs> but yeah, like Katakuri showed up. I'm like, no fucking way. I had a feeling, though, that we weren't going to get, like, any action or too much screen time from them, like, you know. But it was really cool. I'm forgetting so many. Oh, my God. Like, fuck, there was so many people. Um, One Piece film red characters. I don't know. But yeah, all the um the guest appearances, yeah, Brulee Jim Yeah, oh yeah, Fujitora, Aikainu, and Kizaru. Yo, I see them. I'm like, holy shit. Um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to save that Admiral talk for later once we start talking about Shanks too. Um, but yeah, man, it was really cool. All the, all the red hair or the, yeah, red hair pirates are there. Uh, yeah, this guy. Momonga, Momonga. The lieutenant, the lieutenant of the Marines. He was there like, yeah, everyone else is just kind of like, really like no, no name people. Yeah. And then, yeah, Trafalgar Law, the heart pirates were there, you know? So yeah, it was really cool. The red hair pirates and we actually got to see, man, so um, when Kizaru shows up and goes face to face with Ben Beckman again, just like they did in Marineford. Now, you remember in Marineford, obviously, I mean, you should remember this. When the red hair pirates show up, Kizaru is about to shoot a light beam and Ben Beckman puts his gun and aims his gun at Kizaru and Kizaru's like, Oh, Ben Beckman. Right? And that's when we're first like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, you're making Kizaru, an admiral with the light light fruit, put his hands up. Who are you? You know? So, when that happened, and it happened again in this movie, Kizaru was about to blast another light beam again. And Ben Beckman aims his gun. And Kizaru's like, okay, I'm good. Like, don't shoot me. So, 
that that happened in the anime and then this movie, which makes me think something's going to happen in the future between Ben Beckman and Kizaru at some point. There's going to be some type of fight or like exchange. I don't know, something with them. So that was really cool how it like referenced Marine Ford as well. Um, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, that's that's like. Beppo. Oh, and the, yeah. The way they could turn like tiny and stuff. Bueno was tiny. He was using his devil fruit too much. <laughs> and he turned tiny. Um, yeah. It, it, man, it was cool. All, all the, like the mom, big mom pirates. I'm like, who, why are these guys here in the movie? It was awesome to see them, but it's like, what? so random. It's so random. It was awesome. Right. Um, uh, okay. So Goldie Roger. Now, um, fuck. Oh, so it showed Shanks. Okay. So it seems like Uta isn't Shanks' biological daughter. They found her in a treasure chest or, uh, yeah, some type of chest. And, um, Shanks, I get they Shanks just ended up bringing her on the ship and I guess at some point said hey you're my you're my daughter that's what I got from that um because it shows like the view up and then Shanks's face comes in I think it's Ben Beckman Lucky Rue and like somebody else and they're looking over the chest and it's like from Uta's view looking out of the out of the thing right but then it fades to Goldie Roger Silver's Rayleigh and I think there was two, two other guys that it showed from their crew. And it goes for a quick second and it shows Goldie Roger, uh, the other Silver's Rayleigh and two other guys looking over the chest. And I think it was, um, that's the way that they found Shanks was like the same way. Shanks was trapped somewhere in, in a barrel or a chest or something. And Goldie Roger and his crew found Shanks and brought him onto the ship. And he became part of the Roger Pirates. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's pr that's what I got from it. Um, so as far as Shanks' backstory goes. Like it, if, if that's the way it went, then he... It's, he was found by Roger, part of the crew. Roger passed away. He made his own pirate crew. But I thought that was really cool. Just see, honestly, seeing Rogers in anything, at any moment, I'm like, holy fuck. You know? So, I mean, that that's what I got from that. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but that's that's what I got from that. Um. Yeah. Um, when Gordon lies to Uta about the Shanks pirates, about the Shanks, or the Shanks pirates, the red hair pirates actually being the ones to destroy that entire island. And it's crazy how Shanks told Gordon to tell Uta that. When it was actually... Uta that found those secret notes or the secret song to bring that demon about to destroy the city in the first place. It was never the red hair pirates ever. It was actually Uta that did it. Gordon knew this and Shanks told Gordon, Hey, you need to tell them it was, it was us that did it or else, you know, people are going to look down on Uta, call her a demon. You know, she, She'd be cast away, you know, and and not only that, it would it would destroy her mentally, you know, especially being a little kid, being a, having to 
dissect a situation where you destroyed a city of your family and friends and she was like what at the time six seven you know actually no because she's a year older than luffy right but yeah it, whatever that um yeah so she was like six or seven or something when that happened so that was a really cool twist at the end i, I didn't see that coming at all that was really cool um and then uh I think that's kind of it for like the main part of the movie. Um, now, near the end of the movie, holy fuck. So, when you guys say spoilers, because I haven't read the manga, I'm trying to watch it and pick out what I think a spoiler is. Because it's good that, I mean, obviously it's good you guys didn't tell me what the spoiler was. But there was, I, I don't know what the spoiler is. There was a bunch of stuff. I don't know if the stuff with, with Shanks and Luffy, I don't know if what part of that or if it is canon I don't know. All I know is that I was looking for spoilers. Right? So, um, I'm going to start off by saying this. Luffy's Gear 5. We see it. Um, but that's it. He just kind of like flies in. He's in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. And I specifically remember that. Because he went by and I fucking pointed. I like looked at the big screen. I pointed and I look at my buddy. I'm like, gear five. That's gear five. That's gear five. And I said it like five fucking times. Well, that's funny. I, you know, gear five. I said it five times. That was not on purpose. Um, but yeah, I was like, yo, that there it fucking is. And it's awesome because we don't see anything. But like, we don't see how he becomes, how we, how we, you know, we don't see him turn into, we just see it for it wasn't even 10 seconds on the screen. Like, and it was, it's awesome. So, I mean, I, since I already knew about Luffy's gear five, that's, yeah, I got spoiled on it, but that, that's fine. You know, um, I, we don't, I, well, I don't know how he even comes to like being able to do that. Like it, all we, you guys know what I'm trying to say, right? Like we, there's no concrete story or and anything that shows us how he becomes Gear 5. The emotional stress that he has to go through in order to get to that point where he's like, okay, I need to go Gear 5. Um, assuming, assuming he knows that he has it, he's just never had to use it up until this point in the story. Right? Kind of like Gear 4. He had it. We just didn't know. But he he had it in his back pocket. He just didn't need to bring it out until uh, Doflamingo, right? And Katakori was Snake Man. Um, but yeah, seeing that Gear 5. That was a teaser. Because I already knew about it, it's a teaser. And now, oh fuck, I can't wait. Oh man. That's going to be so awesome. Now. On the other hand, Shanks. What a fucking monster. Shanks is on a different level. Okay? Up until this movie, we've really only seen when Conqueror's Hockey is demonstrated in One Piece. And not infused either, like just when you like use it. Um, we've only seen really people like, pa they either pass out or if they don't pass out, they're just kind of like struggling to like even stand up. You know what I mean? Now... When Shanks uses his hockey, it 
It is so powerful that it pushes it it is so powerful that it sends I don't even know how to describe it. It sends gusts of wind. There's so much aura and power behind his Conqueror's hockey that it fucking pushes everyone. Admirals, admirals are having trouble standing up. They ha- they they're getting blown. Everybody's getting blown back. Shanks's hockey is ridiculous. And if that is t- one type of spoiler that you guys are talking about, um, being able to witness his hockey, me personally, I wouldn't really call that a spoiler. Um, we know he's fucking strong, right? We, we know this. Um, as far as we know, he doesn't have a devil fruit. So, um, oh, wait, I'm just thinking for a sec. Uh, cause it's mob, right? Title. Shank. Oh, and Blackbeard. Right, 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 right. As far as we know, Shanks is the only Yonko that doesn't have a devil fruit. And if he doesn't, I mean it speaks for itself. It speaks for itself. We we he has to have unbelievable hockey. And for people to be scared of him with no devil fruit, just the, the power of his hockey. For the people to be that scared. And again, again made a reference to Marine Ford. Shanks shows up and everybody bitches out. He's like if you got if people want to die, I'm here. Like bring it on. Again, admirals, no. We we it's time to retreat. We we're not we're not fighting. We're not fighting. I forget the exact words, but he said like we're we're not fighting right now. Or no, you know what it was? He's like we have to we have to um uh turn down and not fight because of all the casualties around. Now, that is a blatant lie. May maybe not because it was Fujitora that said that, but we know what the Marines are like. They don't give a shit about civilians or any of that. Fuck, they have buster calls for fuck's sakes. You know what I mean? So when Fujitora says that, oh, we can't fight here because of the civilians, he won't. The other guys will. They don't give a shit. So the fact that everyone else also backed down from Shanks. What does, what does this guy do? What is he capable of? When are we going to see him in the anime? I don't even know. Like, I was going to say, I don't know if you manga readers would even know, but I mean, it's pretty obvious. This is, okay. This is another thing too about Shanks and Gear 5 Luffy. Okay. It reminded me of Big Mom and Kaido. And they had a twin attack. That was... mm, Unbelievable. I thought Kaido and Big Mom's twin attack was ridiculous. Holy fuck. And if that's a spoiler, then it is what it is, guys. If that's a spoiler, if it is, then okay, Shanks, if, sorry, if the twin attack is a spoiler, then it's obvious that Shanks will show up in Wano at some point and fight with Gear 5 Luffy or um, he'll just 
show up after. Um, but just just from that, the 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 um, it sh- showcased Shanks's power and a twin attack with Gear Five Luffy. I think it's safe to say that Shanks is going to show up sometime near the end of Wano. Um, I mean, if he does, like, I, I don't know at this point what's a spoiler and what isn't because there was a bunch of shit in, um, there was a bunch of stuff in like at the end of the movie where I'm like, like, I, I don't know what, I don't know what's canon and what isn't, I don't know what's going on, but, uh, yeah, man, gear five, Luffy Shanks is hockey, man. There's a reason. There's a reason why nobody wants to fight these these guys. We haven't actually seen them go all out. We we got to see a little bit of Ben Beckman just put a little hockey on his arm and deflect a bullet away. That was nice. It was nothing, really, but I mean we got still got to see him do something other than point his gun at Kizaru and make him Ben Beckman, you know? Holy fuck. Like, how strong is Ben Beckman? Oh! Usopp and Yasop! Oh my god, they fucking met in the movie. They met in the movie. That was unbelievable. Yasop's observation hockey is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. And it's sick. Because he made a comment about Usopp um, still trying to uh, like work on it, or he's try- he, he's far behind. I think that's what the wording that he says. He's too he's far behind and has to work on his uh, work on it. And this is what I've said for videos, episodes, and episodes. When are we gonna see Usopp master his observation hockey and use it? Actually, use it on purpose. It's coming, we don't know when, but it was so nice to actually see it get acknowledged in the movie. Like, you know, it just just, just kind of like a reminder. Like, yes, he does have it. He does have observation hockey. He's just got to master it. So that whole thing between Yasop and Usopp was so sweet. Because we haven't seen that in the series at all. They haven't even, you know? We haven't seen any interaction at all between those guys. I don't even know if they've set eyes on each other in in the series at all. Um, I'll have to double check. But, um, man. What a movie. What a movie. Um, I'm trying to think of anything that I'm forgetting. Um, yeah, I don't know. Brooke just being able to see Nami's panties. That was pretty funny. Um, hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I forget. Uh, I, 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 th- I think that's basically all I really had to cover other than this fucking man. I am bumping. I was bumping this track. I can't, I wake up and go to work. I wake up at six o'clock every morning to go to work and I leave my house around like six forty. right? I drink my coffee on the way to work and I don't listen to music like at all. It's just like a nice, like I just woke up. It's just a nice, like quiet drive to my work. It takes like 15 minutes for, for me to get to work. Um, I always, it's just always a quiet drive after one piece film red. I, I had, yo man, this is, this is my favorite song in the entire movie. Okay. I actually, I'm going to, I'm going to skip forward a little bit. It's, it's basically the theme song. I think. Oh yeah, man. This is such a banger. Uh, I gotta skip. (laughs) 
Man, I was bumping this so hard all the way to work. Man, and me, me and, uh, me and the, um, my buddy that was sitting beside me, he, uh, we're both sitting there just like, we look at each other and we're both just subtly like bumping our heads. And I look behind us and there's another group of three people. And I, I for sure saw one guy just like, just like bumping along with the music. Yo, if no one else was there, I would have been like, let's fucking go. Oh, it's so good, man. So, yeah, I think... Like the... Oh, man! This song, like, puts you in a good mood, man. Yo! Oh my god, it was such a good movie. Um, I'm going with, uh, I want to go with my buddy again next weekend and go watch it again. Just to, um, pick out little things in case I missed anything. And he also saw it, uh, yesterday as well. This is a guy that I work with. He, uh, saw it as well. So, uh, we're going to go together and just kind of like pick out things. Um, little things here and there in case we missed anything. Uh, like things that are very subtle because obviously the first time you watch anything through, there's going to be shit that you miss, right? Unless you're pausing like however often, right? Um, so fuck man, that was such a good movie. For those of you that haven't seen it yet, go watch it. Go watch it. It's so good, man. Uh, yeah, so that song uh, by uh, Otto, I, I think that's how you pronounce it, the the chick that uh, sings that song, the theme song for it. Uh, that's my favorite song in the whole thing. Uh, I think there's, I think she sang, I was counting, I think it was six different times she sang. That's my favorite song. Um, but they're all not bad. You know, like if you... It's, it's shit like this that kind of warms people up to different, um, ah, fuck, what's the word? Different, I don't know, horizons, I guess. It, it expands your taste, um, in music. If someone were to put that on, if someone were to put that on in my car 10 years ago, I would have been like, come on, man, nah. Nah, put on some Dr. Dre, put on something, some Nas, you know? Fuck. Now I'm bumping this on the way to work and home from work. I literally, literally listened to this three times on the way to work and three times on the way back. I, this is, it's the song I've been listening to from, it's a two hour movie, so from, 6 57 50. So like let's just say nine o'clock last night until three quarter after three today. I literally have not listened to any other song. I literally haven't. I'm not even kidding. Like oh man. What oh what oh man, I'm so fucking pumped. The end of Wano was gonna be fucking crazy. So fucking crazy, man. And we still have a lot to cover in Wano too. It's like, and I'm not in a rush to get there either. Like it, it, like I was saying before, if the case is that Shanks does show up at some point in Wano, like I, man, I don't care. Like, oh my God. It's still going to be, because I don't, like I was saying, I don't know what's, there was definitely some canon things, because you guys keep saying, yeah, there's spoilers in it, but there's a bunch, like, I don't know, is is that whole end part, like, don't tell me this, but like, is the whole end of that movie the entire spoiler, or was it just the little things at the end, the Gear 5, the Twin Attack, maybe, um, 
And it's it's more of a teaser to me because I haven't read the manga. So as an anime only watcher, when you guys say there's spoilers, I don't I still don't know what's a spoiler and what isn't. You know, like I, I'm excited for whatever's gonna come. I have no idea. I don't know if just from what I saw, Shanks is probably show up at the end of Wano. Um, I don't know if that's when Luffy's going to turn gear five or if he's going to turn gear five before that. Um, but yeah, Shanks might show up and they might have to fight um, a two on one V Kaido. But again, I don't know because a gear five Luffy's going to be fucking broken. Like, a new gear with infused conquerors hockey. How do you beat that? Like, how, I, I don't know, man. <sighs> oh, man, that was good. So, uh, I think I covered basically anything I really, I really, holy shit. It's been 41 and a half minutes. <laughs> Time flies when you're talking one piece, man, straight up. So, uh, yeah, that's it. That's my review. I hope, uh, let, let me know what you guys thought of the movie. I mean, I'm assuming, like, cause there's a lot of people that are going to think it's fucking awesome. There's going to be a lot of people that think it's average. And there's going to be people, they're going to be people that think it was shit. Honestly, like to each their own. Right. So tell me what you guys thought and what, did you like the movie? Did you not? Did you like it? And were there parts you didn't like or the vice versa? You know, like, let me know. Cause fuck man, that was awesome. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's it for me guys. Thanks for listening to my review, and I will see you guys soon. Peace.